So for the last couple days, I've been debating on whether I should leave this rubble here, like I said that I was going to do in my last video, or whether I should just move it out of my way. Uh, that way I maybe can multitask a little better. You know, I'm not 100% for sure that I'm going to be using this stuff, uh, all of it, on the bank reinforcement anyway. So I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead, get this out of my way, even though it may cause me a little extra work in the long run on a project this, of this scale. It doesn't really matter to me anyway. So I think I'm going to move this out of my way. That way I can start prepping the floor or the ground for the new pad, and I can start working on that back wall foundation. With all this rubble here, you know, I'm, all I can do is work on the bank because I'm just tripping over this stuff. But if I get this out of my way, I can maybe you know, spread my work out a little better. And if it rains, I can still work in here. Right now, you know, all I can do is work on the bank with this stuff here. So I'm going to get it out of my way, I think. Uh, monster bar here is awesome. I can think of several instances in the past where this would have come in handy. Elizabeth's down there pressure washing the house. Oh. Let me show you this. Oh, they didn't smash him. Ah.
wasn't all that bad. Probably two and a half hours to move that all that rubble from the pad here or from the from the shop all the way over across the road. And I think that when I bring it back over here, or if I do, um, it'll go quicker than that because you know it's not wedged together over there like it was here. So hopefully those concrete stakes that I made out of steel make a little more sense to people now that you, know, you can see how much rocks in the ground. And I didn't make those concrete stakes for that little phase converter pad, although I used them on it. I made those concrete stakes uh, with the intention of using them for the footings and stuff that I do around here. Some of that I probably will do by myself. But you know, I had several people in my last video comment about me pouring this pad with that little mixer. And I don't even know that that would be humanly possible to do. Maybe. But, uh, you know, I don't have enough experience with concrete to even consider uh, doing something like that. This is probably more like a five to eight man job with two to three trucks showing up with concrete already mixed. You know, and those guys knowing what they're doing. And it's still being a lot of work. So, I don't know how that rumor started. It's the large Bosch, the RH540M hammer drill. It's it's not mine. I wish it was. Uh, it's just borrowed. But I mean, that thing makes short work. It does, only takes a few minutes for each pipe, two or three minutes per hole. I'm kind of just messing around here. It's the only thing that's the only thing that I've seen, you know, using it to run all these holes that's any bit uncomfortable about using it is the heat from the from the electric motor here blows around the switch there and heats your fingers up. But other than that, you know, it's awesome. It's not proportional, but it does have speed selection on it. That's a heck of a hammer drill.
go. Last big piece. It worked out really well. Hopefully I brought that back far enough. I believe that I did. So I'm glad to have that big rock out of there. I'm fully, I'm fully expecting them to be about every three feet down through here and then I'll have to remove them. My plans are at the moment, which are subject to change, is to do a full foundation along this lower wall um, and then maybe two to three runs of block on top of that foundation and then wood from there up just to keep the weight down on this on this hillside and then block front and back you know some good windows and stuff that's the plan you know I, like i said i'm not fully committed to that yet so i need to talk to talk to the guys who make those decisions for a living make sure i'm on the right track before i you know fully commit that's kind of the plan i didn't want to remove any more of that rock than i had to because i didn't want to dig out that hillside because i i did probe that and it runs way back in there. I'd, I'd have to remove that full chunk to get that out of there. So that was the reason for drilling it and fracturing it where I did. So we'll see. So I've got some exciting news. Exciting for me and Elizabeth anyway. Now if you've watched the channel for any amount of time, probably maybe a month, month and a half ago, me and Elizabeth said that we were going to step back away from Peanut the Squirrel a little bit. We suspected that she was pregnant because it was squirrel mating season. We were going to let her do her thing. And to be honest, you know, Peanut was really more interested in eating and going about her business than she was worried about me and Elizabeth petting her and handling her and all that stuff anyway. So just a minute ago, I was down at the house taking a break. And I look up here at the shop and I see a small gray squirrel, probably four inches in length minus the tail, come from under the shop door and start fumbling around out in the driveway, real uncoordinated like. So I think me and Elizabeth were correct in that this very possibly may be Peanut's offspring. I haven't gotten her nest and looked and messed with any of that stuff, but I really do think that this is Peanut's baby. There could be more, I don't know. But I grabbed the camera, I ran out and got some shots of this little thing. So let me introduce you to the new member of the family, and that is going to be Walnut the Squirrel. Just enjoying that walnut. <laughs> what do you think about that? Mm, so cute. I was like, why is everybody getting near me? You guys are a little, little, little close. Face. You guys are getting a little too close. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. I should take a photo with my phone. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, I'll stick on you. So check that out. My wife Elizabeth came up with some awesome temporary uh, channel swag. This is not just any squirrel. This is an actual photo of Peanut the Squirrel on a sticker and on a mug. And maybe on a shirt in the future, but for now, stickers and mugs. From Teespring, we're still working on this. I ordered these, they're samples, because I wanted to see the quality before I offered them up to anybody. And I'd have to say I'm pretty impressed. It's definitely a really nice print. So if you're interested in help and support Peanut the Squirrel's Nut Fund, and maybe even Walnut the Squirrel, if Walnut decides that it wants to stick around, uh, go pick you up a nice sticker or mug or both, and uh, you know help beef up her nut fund. And I'll waste whatever's left on tools. So as of the filming of this, we're still working on the store where these will be available from. But you can check down in the link in the description and see if there's a Teespring link down there where you can pick you up a squirrel coffee cup or sticker. I was really, really impressed with the quality of these, and I'll be happy to 
stick peanut on my sticker board and drink my coffee out of the peanut the squirrel mug. So the place that this plumb bob is pointing to represents the outside corner of the back block wall and then the outside of the lower wall here. This string line is hung from the outside of the seal plate. You know, the dimensions of this building are already set. I'm building up to the seal plate that's already there. So I'm going to do the same thing that I've done here, down there on the other front corner of the shop. I'll do some stakes, you know, a string line that runs down through here. That'll give me a good you know, a good place to start for my foundation here. Good enough, I guess. Of course, I would hit a huge rock right there. I had to dig it out so I can needle just drive my corner post in. So here'd be a good project you could make for yourself or as a gift. I've actually gave a couple plumb bobs that I've made away in the past. You, know, you could make it as elaborate or you know, as simple as you'd like. This is just a piece of hex stock, obviously. It could be round. It could be brass, bronze, steel, like this one. Just a blind hole in the back that's threaded. The nut is through drilled, or the bolt, and then counterboard in the back so the knot on the string can kind of recess up in there. This one's also knurled around the outside, but it wouldn't necessarily have to be. So it'd be a good project for somebody. Kill a little time. You can also buy that for five bucks, but you know, be a good project. So we're going to be able to drive this one in the ground without hitting rock. No. Can we drive it in the ground now? Wow. It's amazing. So here's one of the most widely used, probably universally accepted building tools that you see all over the planet on about any construction site you go to, and that's the use of a string line. I mean, probably before the Egyptians, I'm sure people were using string lines to lay out buildings and stuff. And if you can be within the accuracy of the width, you know, of a piece of, str piece of string on a building, in most cases, that's plenty good enough. You know, they're cheap, easily accessible, not hard to use, and they just work. That's a good tool to have in your toolbox and a good skill to have is the use of a string line. So the building layout seems like it goes really slow. 
but it's obviously one of the most important things you can do. You know, other than demolition, which feels like it goes kind of fast because it does, you know, you're just rough doing whatever, uh, nothing's critical really. This is what takes the time and what I think a lot of people are probably the most concerned about, which they should be, you know, when they do a project like this. So my neighbor just brought me down a whole bunch of old fencing wire that he had bought at auction years ago. Me and him were over at the shop discussing what I was going to do as far as erosion control on the bank beside the shop and the topic of gabion baskets came up. And he said, I've got a whole bunch of old wire that I'll bring down if you want it. That I guess he no longer, no longer needed it, but this stuff is six feet high. I don't know how long it is, but this old commercial wire, it's got a really heavy coating on it. You just don't you just don't see this stuff at your local stores. I went and looked around for this stuff last week, and all I could find was stuff that resembled this, but was nowhere near as heavy duty as this stuff is. So I appreciate that. And I'll either turn this into gabion baskets, or I'll use it just as a draping over my riprap, all that concrete rubble, to keep that bank from eroding farther. So that was really nice of him. And that is some really good stuff. the water looks like at my house when uh, it rains heavy. Probably about eight feet deep.
play this twist to your collar. You can pull this rock out, okay? Come on. Now let's hit this. Not interested? So I'm just digging by hand here along where my footer is going to run and I have to go at least two feet down to get below the frost line. And I'm just kind of doing an exploratory dig here. I want to make sure that there's no more huge boulders, at least obviously in the way, because uh, chances are I'll rent a small excavator to finish this out because it's so much easier. But Behind the camera here, and I'll swing it around and show you in just a second, I've got a couple, a couple tools that make a lot of people very uncomfortable when they see them. It makes, I mean, some people have a reaction. So let me swing you around, show you these tools. If you're squeamish, uh, feel free to look away for the next minute or so. So are you ready to see them? Pretty well known around the world for causing quite a bit of discomfort, these two tools specifically and these as well. Uh, people try to avoid using these at any cost uh, for good reasons. They are tough tools to use but all jokes aside I picked up these two shovels. These are cobalt steel 
Um, I guess it's their premium line. I picked them up right before I started this project, and I'm glad that I did. These are really well made uh, compared to some of the some of the cheaper shovels. They they got a lot of weight to them, which is a good and a bad thing. But uh, I don't regret buying them. So check them out if you're interested. I even like the the handle up top's pretty nice, kind of ergonomic, I guess. And they got a pretty good uh, soft grip on them as well. So my structural engineer stopped by today. We went over all the options that are available as far as the reconstruction on this building. You know, we talked about the, you know, the pros and the cons to a lot of them. We talked about my original plan, which was full foundation, small stem wall, and then wood up from that. And I still, I think that's what I'm going to go with. You know, we ran all the numbers, and as long as we exceed code, I think we'll be good. So a lot of work to go here. I need to get me a small excavator in here to finish this trench out, or the, the footing out. Because what I can do in five days with a shovel, an excavator can do in probably 30 minutes, and that's not an exaggeration. But they're frowning really big on any non-necessity travel or business, so we'll see. Although I do believe that construction is considered a necessity, depending on your option, or depending on your need, I guess. So we'll see. I think that's it. Huge thanks to all my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. Anybody who supported me on this project, it's much appreciated. Click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. And that's it. So thanks for watching, guys. And see you next time. Stay safe.